Hi, in this video I'm going to be introducing a small bit on lighting theory and point source calculations. The reason we're looking at point source calculations is because we use these to work out the levels of illuminance on a surface based on certain light, in, light output or source intensity and the area of the surface that we're looking at. So to look at this in the sense of a program, I'm pulling up an example here in Dialux, which is a program for simulating lighting scenes. And you can see here I have a single luminaire, which will have a certain light output or luminous intensity. And it's able to calculate the illuminance on a given surface or a working plane. So what we'll be learning in this video is the important values associated with the lighting theory and then have to carry out these point source calculations. So for this next part of the video, I'm going to move to the overhead camera. So in lighting theory, we can consider this, we can consider it in four main stages. And these four stages are source, flow, illuminance, and luminance. So if we consider that this circle represents a lighting source, first one, our source. This produces our light like so. And illuminates a given surface. I'm just going to outline this surface like so. And I'm going to cross the area that we're actually illuminating. So we consider that this is the light source. Then we have the flow of light. And then we have the illuminance on our surface. and luminance after this, which is a reflected light. But for now, I'm just going to focus on these three. So I said, I said our source of light is measured in luminous intensity. And the unit we use for that is candela. This produces a flow of light, which we call our luminous flux. And this is measured in a number, and this is measured in lumens. And then finally, on our surface, we're illuminating we have our lux. So when our light falls on the surface, this tells us the level of illumination on that surface. It's equivalent to lumens per meter squared. And that'll make sense shortly. So one of the laws of light that we need to learn about here is the inverse square law. So if we consider that this light is being projected from this source. If we travel a certain distance, we'll call that distance D from the source and measure the area that has to be illuminated. We can call that lowercase a. That's a given area depending on the angle of the light that we're looking at. But if we travel the same distance again, which is effectively the same as doubling the distance, two times the distance, the area we have to illuminate ends up doubling in both dimensions. So we end up having four times as much area here. Or we've squared it. And if we travel the same distance again, the surface, the area that we end up having to illuminate increases by a factor or a power of three compared to the first distance. So these are all the same area, but just now we have nine of them. So there's a law that we have for measuring illuminance in this case. 
So if we want to measure a luminance, its symbol is E. It depends on the luminous intensity, which is given by our source of light. And this is then divided by our distance squared. And this is where I said that relationship will become apparent, our lumens per meter squared. So essentially, if we have a source of light, it's and we know it's luminous intensity and the distance from it, and the surface is parallel to the travel of the light, we can work out its illuminance. So, for example, let's say we have a source that has a luminous intensity of 1000 candela. And the working plane or the surface that we're illuminating is at a distance of two meters away from the source of light. And it's perpendicularly falling on it. Well, then we can work out that the illuminance will be 1000 over 2 squared, that's 2 meters. If you pass that through your calculator, you end up calculating that it has 250 lux. So this is quite a basic way of calculating the illuminance. One of the things that we have to consider when we're doing this is that the surface may not be perpendicular, as it is in this case, to the travel of the light. So another thing we have to consider in it is that there is, if the surface is not perpendicular, we have to take into account the cosine law. The purpose of the cosine law is to take into account that if our surface, this is our surface here, is not perpendicular to the traveling light, like so we'll say this represents the light traveling in, so the source at this point is up here. Now the source has to illuminate a larger distance here because of the fact that it's not perpendicular anymore. And when we have this relationship here, so that's our angle, when we have this relationship here, our calculation for illuminance now depends upon the cosine of that angle, as well as the luminous intensity and the distance squared. So I'm just going to separate this page. Give myself some more room, make it look a bit neater. So we can apply that thinking to this scenario here. Let's assume that we have a source with a luminous intensity of 2000 candela. And just like before, we want to calculate the illuminance on a surface perpendicular. That's four meters beneath the source. Well, at that, we should be able to do that. That's just going to be E times I over D squared. Which will be 2000 over 4 squared. And that comes out as 125 lux. But what if, say, we want to calculate the illuminance at this point here, which is, let's take for example, three meters away from the original point directly beneath the source. Well, we can do that. If with a bit of Pythagoras, you can work out that this distance is five meters. And again, 
the angle that we're concerned about is this angle here. This is the angle in this formula, cosine theta. Now, which, again, if you're familiar with your trigonometric functions, the cosine of any angle in a right angle triangle is the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. So that becomes 0 0.8. So with that in mind, if we want to work out the illuminance at this point, it now becomes I times the cosine of theta divided by d squared. So pay attention to this. That's still 2000 because the source has not changed. But we have to take into account the fact that there's an angle so that's where our point A comes in. And now the distance here is 5 meters squared. And that ends up coming out at 64 lux. So you can see that the effect of moving away from directly underneath the source so the light is no longer perpendicular to the plane, two things are happening. The intensity is being affected by the angle, but also it has a longer distance to travel as well. So that too ends up reducing the amount of lux on that surface. So that's the basic introduction to lighting theory for the moment. And this can be ta this thinking can be applied to not only single sources like here, where we have a single source and a plane that's directly beneath at a right angle, or a plane that's directly be one source, and we can measure it at two different locations, the illuminance. But we can also apply this to having multiple sources of light. And what we'll see is that the contribution from each source can be added together based on the position we're measuring the illuminance at.